Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about another new feature on Cisco DNS Center version 2.1. It's called the DNS Center Application Visibility Service, also known with another name called Software Defined AVC. AVC stands for Application Visibility and Control. When we talk about uh, application experience from a DNS Center perspective, there's a couple of things that need to happen. The first thing is how can you have a consistent classification or identification of applications end to end? So this is very critical because if you want to deploy a consistent QoS policy end to end, you want the classification to be consistent first. Then the second step obviously is you go use application policies to define intent based uh, QoS policies end to end. So once you've defined your QoS for business critical applications, you want to know how your applications are performing. And you want to isolate any uh, issues that are going on with performance of those applications. And that's where application assurance comes in. So this is based on all the telemetry that we collect from the network, where we're able to calculate health scores for applications and also calculate various stats for every application, such as delay jitter packet loss also you want to know where exactly the delay is is it on the client facing side is it the network delay is it the delay on the application side so all of these are delivered as part of application assurance now the second and third point that you see on this slide which is app policy and app assurance have been shipping with dns center for a while now what we've added now recently is the ability to classify applications end-to-end -end consistently on the network using the DNSE controller service called Application Visibility Service. So let's clear a few terminologies before we get into the details. Now, the way application classification happens on our infrastructure today is using a technology called NBAR2 that runs on most of our routers, which is access points. And NBAR2 uh, uses various mechanisms like deep packet inspection, DNS-based heuristics. Um, it can also recognize some encrypted applications. Uh, so the, the various mechanisms NBAR2 uses to recognize applications. It has about 1,400 plus signatures uh, that are delivered using something called protocol packs. So each time there are new signatures or there are enhancements made to existing signatures, so they're delivered as part of protocol packs on all of the network devices. Now we're taking this one step further by using something called CBAR. So CBAR stands for Controller-Based App Recognition. This is another name for application visibility service that we just spoke about earlier. So we have now a container on Cisco DNS Center that learns about all the applications that are there on your network and improves the classification for unknown applications and custom applications and also improves signatures for cloud applications that always keep changing. So since this is being done from DNS controller, we call it controller-based app recognition. But for simplicity, this is just the same as software-defined ABC or application visibility service. Now let's see some of the reasons why we need a service on the DNS controller to do all of these things. So if you look at some of the application recognition challenges today, uh, there's a lot of homegrown applications or custom applications on an enterprise network. And most times these applications uh, tend to be encrypted now, the challenge with that is NBAR that is running on your network device may not have a signature for custom application. And hence, the NBAR table here for that application is going to show that it's unresolved or unclassified and there's not going to be an app ID for it. So one way of addressing that is you can define custom NBAR signatures uh, using uh, the CLI that you see here at the bottom. Now. The challenge here again is you have to really know some of the unique ways to recognize your application. And if you have a large enterprise network where you have thousands of network devices, you would have to go program these custom signatures on every network device. 
and imagine having hundreds and thousands of such applications. Uh, this approach is definitely not scalable. Then the other challenge today with app recognition is everybody's adopting public cloud uh, aggressively. And uh, some of the things uh, that are especially challenge, challenging with cloud apps is take an example of O365 here. So the screenshot here is from O365 where Microsoft publishes a RSS feed uh, for all their applications. Now, NBAR relies on uh, deep packet inspection and analyzing SSL handshakes and DNS traffic. Now, the signatures may not really hold valid if Microsoft keeps changing those IP addresses and URLs. Right? So you need a dynamic way for us to be able to learn signatures that change consistently. So that's another challenge. Uh, the third one is there's a lot of networks where there's asymmetric routing. For example, if you see here, the WebEx traffic is going via MPLS and internet. So the router, since it is receiving traffic on two different interfaces, is not able to see the initial few packets that it needs to see in order to recognize the application consistently. And this is going to be another challenge. And the last but not the least, uh, another challenge you will have in enterprise networks today is various network devices running different protocol pack versions. Now, if you see here, protocol pack version 47 has WebEx audio, whereas the older protocol packs cannot recognize WebEx audio. Now, on this kind of network, if you deploy QoS, the QoS is going to be broken because there are several devices in the network that can't even recognize WebEx audio correctly. So these are all the different challenges we have, and that is why uh, we have uh, the application visibility service on Cisco DNA Center. So let's see how this works. So the first step for application visibility service to work is you have uh, all the devices that are running NBAR that build tables that you see here. Now, these kind of tables are sent to DNA Center using uh, port number 21,730. And so uh, DNS Center receives these tables from various devices, and then it starts correlating these rules from different devices to see how many of these applications are really unclassified or unresolved. Now, when it looks up a, a table and sees some unclassified apps, the next step is this container that is built into DNS Center for uh, application visibility service or CBAR uh, basically runs some statistical analysis based on the amount of traffic that's going in for the traffic to see if it can recognize that application. And then the next step is it can subscribe into RSS feed exposed by Microsoft if it's a O365 signature, so it can actually go and enhance the signature uh, for O365. So for homegrown applications, uh, typically what happens is you have a DNS server like Infoblox. And we have a connector built, to, built with Infoblox. So the DNS admin will typically go and program A records or TXT records for all your custom applications. So DNS sender looks up uh, all of these unknown applications and then it, it tries to pull those details of those applications from Infoblox it can inspect A records and TXT records and understand more about that application and enhance that signature here. The third step is it builds a completely new application rule file that is then augmented on top of the existing protocol pack based rule file that's already on the network device. So essentially at the end of third step, all network devices are running the same uh, application, they all have the same application classification. So now let's actually go and take a look at the demo uh, to see how this works. Okay, now that we know how application visibility service works, let's actually see it in action on the UI. So I have a DNS center running version 2.1. So if I click on about, it tells me that I'm running 2.1. Uh, there are some packages that you need to install for this to work. So one of the packages is application visibility service and the other package is application registry. Of course, application policies helps you define QoS policy on the network. 
So now we can launch this by going into provision and clicking on service catalog where there's a new card for application visibility. So when I click on that, uh, it presents me with a UI uh, that shows all my sites on the left hand side and then the devices that are capable of supporting CBAR or controller based app recognition. So in this case, I've already gone ahead and enabled CBAR on certain devices. Now, if you're Catalyst switch that is cat 9k or ASR ISR routers run a version of iOS XE 1612 and above Then here in this place it shows that the device is CBAR ready and then you will just select the device and Go here and enable CBAR, which is what we've done. So when you do that DNS Center essentially uh, Pushes a certain config on the network device so it can export the application rule file to DNS Center and also learn from DNSC controller and download the latest application rule file on top of the existing protocol pack. So all these devices that are showing CBAR ready are actually doing that right now. So, so the status here shows completed, which means they were able to not only export that application rule file, but they also learned the updated signatures from DNS Center. For all those devices that don't support it, you see here that it shows IP port or not supported. In some cases, it's showing not ready because um, maybe the rule, the, the role of the device was not configured correctly, or in some cases, it's not running the right software version, uh, which is why it's not showing up. For example, if I have this particular router here, it shows not ready because it's not running the right software on it. Wireless is not supported right now. So there's a plan to support the 9800 controllers in one of the upcoming releases. And if there are any issues going on, so those issues are shown here as well. So in this case, uh, there was an issue here. The device was not able to export the cache uh, in the last 37 minutes. So you know where the problems are and that helps you isolate the problems as well. Now, in on the dashlets here, on the first dashlet on the left hand side, it tells me that there are 1401 applications in the registry. So out of which 1400 are built in from the NBAR library and then DNS Center was able to discover one application from the network, which was added to the registry. And then it shows you all these applications that were learned from the network devices, essentially the rules that came in from network devices. And then there are a couple of them that don't have signatures which are shown as unclassified and it gives me an option to go classify those applications or resolve the classification issues. And if there are any issues that are going on, they get shown here, which you can then click and expand on. So now uh, there are a couple of other tabs here. So the next one that I'm gonna click on is called app registry. So the app registry is where all my apps are populated. And all these apps are populated based on the 12 class QoS model, the traffic classes defined for 12 class QoS model. Now, if you want, you could just go and create your own custom application here and then add them to the registry. You can also group them based on the functionality of those apps. For example, under authentication services, I'll find all the apps that have something to do with authentication. So if I click on any one of these apps, uh, it will give me more details on what that app itself is and what traffic class it belongs to. Next is uh, the discover applications tab. Okay, so we just clicked on the discover applications and then uh, it presents you with this particular dashlet that shows how much traffic was observed and how many of the applications were unclassified. And then there's a couple of connectors here. Uh, there's the NBAR cloud connector that enables you to send some of these applications learned uh, to the cloud instance and that way uh, DNS Center can go look up the cloud and uh, enhance the classification uh, by populating it on the cloud. And there's also a connector for O365 that helps you subscribe into the RSS feed exposed by O365 to improve Microsoft signatures. And then there's an info blocks connector for all your homegrown and custom applications where we can learn from the A records or TXT records that are configured on the DNS server and import those applications here. So if I click on edit config here, it shows me that I'm learning from this particular DNS zone, cisco.com. I'm inspecting A record. I also have an option to learn from TXT record. 
and then I can, uh, as soon as I import an application, I can automatically put them under specific traffic class or applications set, or I can also do that uh, for each application separately. So I'm gonna click cancel here. And then uh, I have here certain applications that are unclassified and DNS Center shows me that uh, there are three discovered service, server names and this is coming from all the statistical analysis done by DNA Center which shows me for a certain application that's sending certain amount of traffic uh, it was able to find and discover the application names for it I can go change them here and import it but what I'm really interested about is homegrown applications so I'm going to click on poll info blocks which will now give me an option to see all the homegrown applications defined on the InfoBlox uh, server. These are all the different homegrown applications. For example, there's this application called uh, toolbox.cisco.com. So I'm actually going to change the name here. I'm going to call it toolbox1 um, and I'm going to put it under one of the traffic classes that it need to go under. So I'm going to put it on general media and i'm going to put it under bulk data and then uh, click on import okay i just imported uh, tools.cisco.com into my registry so if i go back here i now see there are 1402 applications instead of 1401 and if i see here there are two discovered applications instead of one so the new app that we learned uh, is actually added under registry right now under bulk data. So I can just search here. Toolbox1.cisco.com and it is specifically marked in green here that indicates this was a discovered application. Now that this is added to the registry, uh, what it has also done in the background is it's gonna create a custom signature on the network device automatically. There's one other workflow here that I wanna cover before going into how we can use this. So if I wanna go update uh, protocol packs on the network devices, uh, there's a workflow here that enables me to select certain devices and go and enable protocol pack. I can also choose uh, what protocol pack versions to run from here. So I'm not going to do that right now, but just wanted to show you where, where you do it from. Now, how do you really use all these applications that we learned? So that's done from the policy tab. So I can click on uh, the policy option here, go into application policy. And I can create a new policy. So I can select the devices where I want to run my policy on. So once I do that, uh, as part of my applications that I'm going to choose, uh, I can actually select the new applications that I learned. Um, so for example, So let me go and search for the option, the application that I was talking about here. It's part of the general media. So if you see here right now, it's part of default. So I can just make that device part of business relevant. And then I can go deploy a policy that will go and deploy QoS policy on my network. So this is how we can first improve classification on the network. And then as a second step, you can go and deploy costs on the network so you can prioritize those business critical applications. So that completes the application visibility service video. Thank you for watching.